Welcome back to Steve's Solar Garage. These three solar panels, I set them up before I left for vacation a week ago, and they've all been connected to an individual grid tight inverter, just like this one. We'll open this up in a minute to take a look. Anyways, um, these are all supposed to be 100 watt panels. This one on the right is a Renergy panel. This is some off-brand, and I'm a little suspicious that it probably isn't 100 watts, unless it's extremely efficient, because you can see it's physically smaller than everything else. And then this panel, this is a special panel, and you can see on top where it says Shade Stopper Technology. So, a quick, a quick explanation. This panel has a bypass diode on every cell. And so theoretically, when I cover one of these cells, it shouldn't have any effect on anything. Whereas on this panel, if I was to cover this cell, it would essentially cut all of the power. So I have data from running these for a week and we're gonna go take a look at that. And this is gonna be the first video in a series of videos testing these. And you know, this really isn't putting the shade stopper to too, uh, to too much of a test because there really wasn't any shade for it. But I just wanna see how it performs in comparison. Anyway, let's go take a look. Before we do that, this is what I'm using to connect these panels to the grid. You can see the operating voltage is 18 to 30 volts. Uh, maximum input at power 180 watts, so it should be sufficient. Maximum working current, 6.4 amps. So that's interesting because I didn't really check check the parameters of the panels, but let's just see what results we got. Alrighty, so let's take a look at what matters, and that is, of course, the data. Um, I'm sure the first question someone's going to ask is, which panel produced more energy? And so this is what we're looking at on this first graph. Uh, the Shade Stopper panel, it won out. Uh, it produced, over this time period, which was around seven-ish days, it produced 1,546 watt-hours. The Renergy came in second place and produced 1,417 watt hours. The eco-worthy panel, the one that I said was suspicious, that produced 1,111 watt hours. And so that was advertised as a high efficiency panel. And maybe, you know, devil's advocate, maybe the micro inverter is not doing a good job at optimizing that. But um, I think for, for the, the purpose of this test, this thing sucks. But um, we'll come back to that another time. Let's just focus on the Shade Stopper and the Renergy. So here was the energy production by day, um, where test one is the Shade Stopper, test two is the, um, the Eco-Worthy, and test three is the Renergy. And so blue is the new technology Shade Stopper, and then gray is the Renergy panel. And so you can see on, on a day-by-day -day basis, that the, the panel with the Shade Stopper technology, essentially the individual bypass diodes for every cell, is producing more energy. And, um, you know, I, I, I had a suspicion that that might happen, but it's cool to see it reflected in this data. And again, you can see the Eco-Worthy panel really just didn't do very good for the whole time. All right, let's move on to the in the next one. So this is this is data by hour and sorry, energy energy production by hour. And then these graphs that you see, same color coding, um, these this is the energy production between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. And of course uh, the angle of those panels once we get to the afternoon, right around 12 p.m., the sun really isn't shining on them anymore. And so this was on the first and you can see in the morning the the shade stopper panel sort of picked up a little bit quicker than the Renergy so the shade stopper is blue the Renergy is great um, but once the Renergy was in full good sunlight it was kind of outperforming but right here at 12 p.m. where the Sun kind of goes around to the other side of the garage the Renergy drops off pretty quickly, as does the Eco-Worthy, but the Shade Stopper seems to kind of outlast it. And now, 
I don't know if that's because it's really close to the corner of the garage and maybe there's something happening there. I may have to shuffle the panels around just to be to be sure that this isn't, you know, just a false result. But um, that's kind of cool. Uh, so scrolling down, though, this is on the 2nd of July. Same time frame, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And you can see we had a dip. So presumably some clouds or some rain or something like that. And it, it seems like a lot of the time the the Renergy and the Shade Stopper are kind of in sync. And sometimes one performs better than the other, at least in this sort of open sunlight scenario where there really isn't, you know, random poles shading the panel or anything like that. Um, yeah, you can see that the energy production there, they're, they're really, really tying most of the way. Uh, now, I, I did kind of zoom in over here. Okay, yeah, this is... This is another graph. This is looking at the second. It's looking at this this uh, downturn, I think. Hang on. Yeah, okay, so we're starting at 1 p.m. and going through to 5. And so you can see how that kind of fades off there. And, yeah, the, the eco-worthy is definitely... <laughs> It's just always dropping out. It's interesting because it looks like it's always um, just kind of a little bit below the power production. It's not like it's a percentage of the power production. It's it's always, you know, like, gosh, it's almost like it's always five watts lower, which does make me wonder about its its maximum power point. Again, maybe that inverter isn't doing a good job. But um, you can see in some areas like, where the where the Renergy once we start to get down to, to the lower lower shade, um, you know, it's dying off. But the the shade stopper, it's picking up quicker and it's dying off later. Same thing over here. This is where that shade stopper is really performing much better. All right, let's um, let's scroll down a little more. I've got another one on here. Okay, so this was this was the morning of the second, and so that's this where we have this this big dip. And um, yeah, again, you can see the eco worthy is just dying off all the time. Nothing, nothing too crazy to see here. Although down here you can see it really, the, the shade stopper kind of jumped up really quick. So that's that's nice. All right, I thought this was an interesting day. This was the 3rd of July, and we have a big, big dip in the middle. And did I zoom in on that? Yes, I did. Okay, so the 2nd of July from 9 a.m. to right around 12 p.m., which is, is 9 a.m., and then here's 12 p.m. as we die down. And so, oh dear, no, what am I doing? Again, the Renergy's staying pretty on par with it. And the uh, the eco weather is just kind of kind of dying out. So you know, even though <clears throat> even though the shade stopper did produce more energy overall, it's not by a lot. And they, you know, I don't I, I don't feel like I can take much from this test yet. This was the fourth. You know, obviously we had a pretty good morning, but then. There was shade for some reason. Maybe it was raining. I don't really know. And on the fifth, again, a nice big dip in the middle. But you can you can see though. You know, oftentimes th there's definitely scenarios where the shade stopper panel is just it's outperforming the energy. You know, wh why is it producing so much more energy here? Um, especially you know maybe up here it's not as big of a deal. But when you get over over to here, right where you're it's like 3 p.m. The sun is obviously not hitting the panels directly at this point. The the shade stopper panel right here is producing more than twice as much energy as the energy, and that's pretty impressive. And so, if you if you're relying on this for say, um, you know, if, if you don't have the grid, 
And that's a pretty big deal. If you if you were on a day where, where the weather was like this, you would really be thankful that the Shade Stopper panel would essentially be worth more than two Renergy panels. Holy crap, I think it's worth, it looks like it'd be worth almost three. That's crazy. That's that's really the area that I was wondering about where it's, you know, it's kind of dull out and um, you know, I'm not sure how the performance will be. And so this, this graph is interesting. The sixth, you can see, you know, right around 12 o'clock, obviously something is going on. But right here, like, you know, this is, this is a whole hour's worth of energy production. Look how much higher the energy production was for the Shade Stopper versus the Renergy and the Eco Worthy. That's insane. We're talking, what, 200 watt hours instead of 50 watt hours. That's really crazy. And again, <clears throat> this is on the seventh. You can see the shade stopper is somehow managing to kind of survive the the more shaded part of the day. And then this is this is today. It seems like when the sun is really out, the energy really does well. But yeah, the shade stopper has an advantage for sure with those diodes. So you know, I don't really know what I conclude from this. The the shade stopper panel is clearly performing better than the Renergy in some situations and I don't know I don't have enough data and enough testing to conclude that, that it's definitely just the panel doing that you know there could be issues with grid inverters or you know, who knows what there, there just has to be more testing to have a better idea on it but um it's kind of cool and kind of promising to see that so right now the panels are facing east and I think the next test that I want to do is face them south. Because when they're catching the sunrise, you know, there's some trees over there that are kind of blocking it, but eventually they get pretty solid sunlight. But for the panels that are facing south, at least the panels that are sitting on the ground, there is a lot of opportunity for shade from just general things in the area uh, to giant trees that should be blocking things. And I think it'll be really interesting to see what kind of energy, energy production these panels get in that environment. So, that's the next test. Stay tuned for it. Um, and if you have any ideas on tests you think I should run, uh, go ahead and leave those in the comments because I definitely want to test this out more. I also have another solar panel that is um, called an OptiVolt panel that has some kind of technology built into it that I don't think is just bypass diodes. And um, that one looks pretty promising too. Uh, however, I have to be able to test that on a 48 volt platform. So that's challenging, but uh, we'll get there. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. And I will see you in the next one.